Hello and welcome into another episode of the Better Half Hour. I'm your host, Alex Monaco. You know how we do it. I'm looking for trends. I'm looking for angles. I'm trying to get you some weekend shekels. Cruise on over with me. We're amidst the NBA playoffs, baby. Let's go. Game one was electric down in Miami. A tale of two halves. As we know, Boston came out, won the first quarter, won the first half, but ultimately Jimmy Buckets and the boys came out to play a 22 Two run in the third quarter, outscored him 39-14 in the third, and that was the difference. Jimmy led all scores with 41. Third time he's gone over 40 in these playoffs, and what do we know about Boston? Well, gave up the most in several games here, 118-107 the Heat. Now continue their undefeated outing at home. They have been remarkable covering nine of their last ten at home as well. Jason Tatum. Not great in the second half. Shot one of seven from the field, six turnovers, and that was a huge element. As we know, Horford was out. Marcus Smart was out. Guys had to step up, and they did not. The Heat have been absolutely on fire. Now, I will say from a betting perspective, the Celtics have been pretty good in the first half. They have won their first half outings in their last six as road underdogs as we get ready for game two tonight. But they've also failed to cover the spread in their last four Eastern Conference Finals games as underdogs. We know they've actually won the most playoff games in the East in the last decade, but they haven't got over the hump 0 for 4 in their last four Eastern Conference outings. Jimmy Butler on a player prop thought 32 plus points in four of his last five games. Absolutely on fire. Let's flip the script to game two as we know. In the Chase Center, first ever, by the way, Western Conference Finals game in Chase Center. All Golden State. They came out, outscored the Mavs by 10 in the first quarter. Mavs got them in the second by one point, but they outscored them in the third and the fourth. So three out of four quarters went to Golden State. 25-point routing. They careened them. They now move to 7-0 straight up at home this playoff run. 5-2 against the spread, averaging just a tick under 117 points on offense at home. Now the Warriors, they have been stupendous, and they did defensively what? we all thought they may have not been able to do, which is hold Luka Doncic to 20 points. He just shot 6 of 18 from 3, 3 of 10 from deep. How about this? The Mavs were 11 for 48 from three-point land. They're number one right now in the NBA playoffs with three-pointers made. Not so much that Steve Kerr defense was sensational. Now the Warriors have been on fire. I mentioned there's seven straight this playoffs, nine straight going back to last year, and the Mavs have failed to cover the spot spread in four of the last five road games despite being the best cover in these NBA playoffs and the Mavs they do come out well they didn't do it in game one but they have won the first quarter in four of the last five games as underdogs gotta mention this though under the Steve Kerr era the Warriors, when they win game one, 19 and one on overall series. The only loss, the 2016 NBA Finals. All right, let's switch to some puck. Serenity now, it's still not over it. The Rangers, you saw them. They outplayed them in the first period. They outplayed the Canes in the second period. And then out of nowhere, at the very end, the Canes got us and they went to overtime and they caught a win. But on a positive thought here for the Rangers, they did outshoot them. They did out hit him block shots as well. Just came down to a little bit of a fortunate luck at the end here. The Canes, I will say, going against Igor 24 saves in game one. You got to love that. And let's not forget, game one went exactly the same way with the Penguins in overtime. They lost game one, came back, bounced back. So do not worry. Although the Canes are undefeated at home this playoffs with five wins, the home team and the home team has won nine straight games with the Hurricane series because nobody won in round one on the road. But nine of the last 10 Hurricanes games have come off of the overtime games on the under. We know these were top two defensive teams in the NHL all season. So as much as the over was the play in Series 1 against Pittsburgh, you got to think this could be a defensive chess match between the Rangers and the Hurricanes as we now shift. We go from the Kentucky Derby to the Preakness, the 147th Preakness Stakes going on this weekend. Little horse racing. Want to start out 
Talking about Epicenter here, six to five odds. Now, we know Epicenter was right there. They had the derby in their hands and then out of nowhere, Cotton L, the good news for Epicenter backers though. This is a shorter race. So we know the shorter the race, this will favor Epicenter. Four wins, two second places in his last six races, first or second since November, which is incredibly impressive. Now, the trainer Steve Asmussen has a pair of Preakness wins, not since 09, but they do have a veteran group between the three of them and Epicenter. I mean, if the horse is aware that they were right there, they're gonna come in hungry, ready to rock. Now staying up here, looking at Secret Oath, female horse, Coming in, this could be the second female horse in three outings at the Preakness to get a win. This horse has been sensational. Five first places, two third places in the last seven that she has gone, seeking to become just the seventh filly to win the Preakness. That's the seventh girl horse ever. And an impressive win coming off at Kentucky Oaks, the third win in four starts in 2022. So this could be worth backing. Her only blemish was a third place outing in the Arkansas Derby. We also know Lucas, who's a part of this squad, six wins in the Preakness, including the Oxbow in 2013. And last but not least, I got to give you a long shot. Skippy Longstocking might be the best name in the business. You got to love it. Third in the Wood Memorial last month month. It is actually the son of the 2016 Preakness winner Exaggerator. So if you want a little legacy play here, this horse is not only experienced, it's got the most races in this weekend. Nine starts, most in the field. We're just getting started on the better half hour. Coming up next, Sean Little.